Well, it's Sunday. You know what that means. Uh, the shows are on all of the news networks at 9 a.m., and the Biden administration is sending uh, various surrogates around to each of the shows to hawk the new vaccine mandate and uh, make the case why it's not only a good idea, but apparently they're trying to make the case that this is, in fact, normal and not something new that's never been tried before and not a new infringement on people's rights. That's an interesting tactic um, because obviously this is not normal. <laughs> There's nothing normal about this. Uh, the president of the United States in my life, and I don't think anybody else's life, has not you know, come out and scolded uh, a quarter of the country and said, my patience with you is wearing thin. Grr, you need to know, go take your medicine. Especially with respect to a, uh, a drug whose uh, efficacy uh, becomes more and more questionable as time comes, goes on and we get more and more data. Uh, this, uh, there was an, a very interesting news clip that I saw out of Israel uh, where they, had, they were playing this clip of a uh, Pfizer executive. I can't remember his exact title, but he was basically saying how, you know, we got an agreement with the Israeli government that they would only use the Pfizer vaccines. And so, you know, we, Pfizer, were very happy about that because, uh, you know, the, country, the state of Israel could be like a controlled experimental group for us. <laughs> and we could look at how exactly, uh, um, uh, you know, our vaccine, you know, impacts the population a, a couple months ahead of the United States. And he basically called, well, no, I shouldn't say basically, he pretty overtly refer, you know, called the Israeli people uh, lab rats. He didn't use the term lab rats, but, you know, that's how he's treating them. And he was very open about that. And if you look at the data out of Israel, again, I don't think I can say anything too specific on YouTube, but you can do your own research. Um, as time goes on, uh, the, uh, the drugs that are being pushed by these people uh, are becoming uh, less and less effective. That's why in Israel they're talking about not only the third shots, which everyone is getting now, uh, but a fourth shot, which is going to be on its way soon. And so this is not a one-time thing. It's not like everybody goes and gets their two shots uh, and they're just done with it. Uh, the, the vaccination process is going to be ongoing, which, you know, that's not really how vaccines <laughs> work. That's not normally how we use the word vaccine, if it's something that you have to go and get uh, every few months. And, uh, of course, there's the question of side effects after. How many days is that going to put you out? There were people who were sick for a couple days after they got their second shot. Um, they were, you know, they felt worse after the second one than the first one. Are they going to feel worse after the third one? Uh, are, are they going to feel even worse than that after the fourth one? How many days a, a year are people going to miss from work after they get their shots? And what happens if you miss one, uh, you know, by a couple of weeks? Are you going to be denied entry into all businesses? Or are you going to be fired from your job because, oh, I forgot to go and get my shot this month? This is the way that people really need to be thinking about this. <clears throat> and this is the way opponents need to be talking about it because this is... Uh, I shouldn't even say this is not where it's leading. This is going to be how it's implemented. Even what Biden has said now, you know, if we're going to mandate that people be fully vaccinated, well, fully vaccinated, the definition of that keeps shifting. And so even if you're someone, you know, who is willing to go and get the shot at all, are you willing to go every couple of months? And are you willing to lose, you know, all of your rights, all of your freedom uh, if you miss a shot even once? You know, uh, how is this, once this precedent is set, uh, you know, how, how else are they going to expand this? What else uh, parts of your ongoing uh, medical records should you display um, when you're trying to get a job or when you're trying to, you know, enter a business or something like that? I think the term that DeSantis keeps echoing, biomedical security state, could not be more appropriate. Uh, that is exactly uh, what we're facing here. This is the closest comparison I can think to to this system um, that they're building. If we talk about you know vaccine mandates and vaccine passports in a uh, context uh, in which you need to get a new vaccine every few months, um, this is like the South African pass system. Uh, you know, this is like apartheid, where constantly people had to be keeping their papers in order. Uh, and, and getting, you know, new work permits all the time. And if they let 
you know, some of their documents lapsed by a couple of days, well, then they were in big trouble. They weren't able to work anymore. They were going to get arrested. But, you know, perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself because I think that the regime is going to run into a lot of problems with compliance long before we get to, to where all this is revealed, to where people realize, hey, I'm going to have to get a shot every couple of months. And, oh, gee, now I'm fired because I forgot to go. Um, I think that there's going to be enough people who are infuriated uh, by the idea that they have to get the shot at all if they don't want it. The, the percentage of the population, the minority of people who have not had it, by this point, after months and months, and months of propaganda, close to a year at this point, they must feel, they must have pretty strong reasons. <laughs> and they're not going to be bullied into doing it. If they, you know, they've had plenty of access to it. The reasons, obviously, why they haven't gotten it is because what they have seen uh, doesn't look good to them. And if you're following uh, the evidence and things and, and data that's coming out of various countries and the United States, um, as time goes on, we hear more and more bad news about the shots, not less. We don't, <laughs> you know, the um, people become more hesitant, I shouldn't say hesitant, more suspicious um, because uh, the data looks worse and worse as time goes on. The data look the best at the very beginning um, before uh, efficacy started to wane because, uh, you know, as far as we know, the, I mean, the side effects are still the same. Your chance of, uh, of suffering some severe adverse event has not gone down, but the um, ability of the drug to uh, help you um, build up immunity to the virus has gone down. And so the relative risk of uh, suffering a severe adverse event has gone, uh, has gone up. And so if you thought that uh, the risk-reward ratio of, you know, for getting the shot initially um, was insufficient, if you thought that it, was, um, that it was too risky given your risk profile for the virus, well, if, um, if it's even less effective against the virus now, well, then, you know, your relative risk of getting it is going to be even higher, and you're going to be more convinced not to get the shot. And so people, I don't think, will be easily bullied uh, just into going and getting it. It's not, they're not, it's not that they didn't go and get it because they're lazy. <laughs> you know, people have been endlessly propagandized about it. People who had, you know, relatively no opinion about it, um, they would have gone and gotten it by now. You've bullied them enough. But the people who are remaining, they're not going to get it. And I think uh, Robert Barnes made an interesting point on this yesterday um, when he compared the unvaccinated group now, the people who are remaining, to like the uh, the one issue gun voters or the one issue uh, you know pro life voters, uh, meaning there's a certain percentage of the population uh, who will you know vote in an election based solely on the issue of the Second Amendment or based solely on the issue of uh, of abortion. And likewise, there's now a new, um, potentially much larger voting block, maybe, you know, 20 to 25 percent of the country who doesn't want this shot. And they are, uh, you know, and if there's somebody in, a, in an election who says, I'm going to force you to get this shot and somebody else who says, I'm not going to force you, they're going to vote based on that sole issue. Now, of course, it's a long time between now and an election, so it's not like that's going to save them. If the regime had the power to impose uh, shots on people, they have plenty of time to do it. You know, we've got a whole nother year. And keep in mind, it's not like even Biden's up for election then. It's only at a Congress. And Congress has been pretty silent on this. You know, they're letting Joe take the heat because Joe is not up for re-election for another three years. And in all likelihood, he won't be um, standing for election. He'll be too old. He will retire. Harris or somebody else will take over. And notice Kamala Harris has not been talking about this. She's not been out there. Um, she's not pushing this. She's not um, playing, you know, vaccine queen. And so this is all very deliberate. Joe is falling on his sword. 
Um, and, you know, the bet that the Democrats are taking here is that they'll be able to force everybody to take the shot, and Joe will take the blame for it, and the rest of us will be able to skirt by. We'll get the best of both worlds. We won't get any blame for imposing the vaccine mandate on people, and everybody will get the shot, which will make us happy. Now, at the end of the day, I don't think that this will be... I don't think that this will be an enforceable in the way that folks within the administration want it to be. It will not have the desired effect. Um, it will disrupt industries. Of, you know, for example, something I hadn't thought of, um, a guest on the Jimmy Dore show brought this up recently, uh, a poll of truckers. Now, it's just one poll, but it suggested that if a vaccine mandate were imposed, about one third of truckers, which to me seems low, uh, you know, would quit their jobs rather than uh, take the vaccine. And in fact, you know, now that I think about it, I was just talking to a, uh, uh, to a trucker who is uh, going out and starting his own business. And it hadn't even occurred to me that this was the day after um, Joe made the announcement. It was on Friday. I, what are the odds? You know, maybe <laughs> that guy probably, he, he didn't tell me this, but he's probably quoting it. Oops, excuse me. Um, he's probably quitting his job over the vaccine mandate. It didn't even occur to me to ask him that, although I think it'd be rude to ask that anyway. Um, but these trucking companies have hundreds of employees, a lot of them. And truckers tend not to be the most uh, liberal people in the world, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, they're not necessarily the types who would be all... Uh, you know, oh, I'm afraid to go out of my house and uh, I need everybody to take the shot or else I refuse to go into Walmart. You know, these are the truckers are some of the few people who were working, uh, you know, straight through March of 2020 and were treated like lepers. They weren't even allowed to go to the bathroom at, at gas stations, um, which was, uh, you know, gross, but... What's going to happen to this country if you have oh, one third or more of truckers just quit their jobs and go and try and find something else to do because they don't want to get the shot? What's going to happen to these big trucking companies? Uh, you know, how many, how long will it take uh, them to to convince a, a bunch of uh, you know happy Fauci ouchy liberals to go get CDLs? so that they could fill those trucking jobs. How many Fauci Ouchie liberals even want to go get CDLs and fill those trucking jobs? There's a reason why the US Postal Service got a waiver for their 600,000 employees because they know it would be a disaster if they had uh, a bunch of, <laughs> a, a huge chunk of their workforce resign in mass over this. As I said before, this is uh, from the workers' perspective, this is the, about the best time Biden could have done this. There's a very tight labor market right now. Uh, there is uh, job openings everywhere. There's more job openings than there are unemployed people officially, um, which you know should tell you a little something about how uh, about how our uh, unemployment numbers are calculated in this country. But that's a that's something of a discussion for another day. So anyway, this is going to cause all sorts of issues before we even get to, you know, how people like it. Um, you know, what what the, what this could turn into on down the road. You know, which is kind of the, that, that's the one reason why I don't fear tyranny so much, because I realize how, how unstable our economic system is, how fragile it is, uh, and, and just how um, how much Americans have become, become accustomed to a high standard of living. Uh, in order for there to be any real serious tyranny in this country, I mean, obviously we're already experiencing pretty bad tyranny in a lot of parts of America, but it's destroyed the economies. Um, there's going to be a lot of economic pain, and I think that that is the Achilles heel of the American system. I think that our federal government can't survive that on a national basis if the federal government is um, seen as the instigator of uh, economic distress it's going to be a bad day for them. And of course, you know, if there is a major, if the, if the White House is dumb enough to push forward with this and cause 
um, some major economic disruptions. Maybe they'll say, hey, we already had supply chain issues last year and we turned out just fine. You know, life, life moved on. Uh, who cares if we disrupt the supply chain uh, by displacing a huge chunk of truckers? Who cares if, I don't know, 10% of nurses resign across the country? Um, we're going to push on ahead. You know, maybe they'll do that, but it will. it's going to be interesting to watch. There is, there's a lot of things that can, that are going, that could happen as a result of this, and none of them are good. So, with that said, um, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.